Welcome to another episode of the Understanding Crypto Series by Thomas Plunkett. Today, we're going to dive into the Ethereum Virtual Machines instruction set. Uh, specifically, what sort of bytecode operations does the Ethereum Virtual Machine offer? Uh, this video and these slides are available under a Creative Commons license. So let's talk about the EVM instruction set or the bytecode operations that are possible in bytecode. So the EVM instruction set offers most of the operations you might expect similar to other uh, virtual machines like the Java virtual machine and so on. So it offers uh, arithmetic and bitwise logic operations. It offers um, execution context inquiries. It offers uh, access to the stack, the memory and the storage. It offers operations for control flow. And it offers uh, logging, <laughs> calling and other operators. So in addition to all of these sort of standard bytecode operations, because we're talking about a blockchain virtual machine, the EVM also offers access to account information like your address and then the balance associated with that address, as well as block information, you know, block number, current gas price and so on. So let's um, go a little bit deeper into the Ethereum virtual machine by looking at the available operation codes and what they do. Um, you know, as you might expect, the operands are taken from the stack. And if there's a result, that the result is often put on top of the stack. So here's a look at um, some of the different categories we're going to go through. We'll start with the arithmetic operations or the mathematical operators. So for example, over here on the left hand, you see a column of operators that you can do in bytecode. Um, and then on the right hand, we've got some comments, you know, they're a comment because it's indicated by the double slash, uh, explaining what each of these bytecode operators does. So for example, um, your, your most basic operator is add, and it just adds the top two items on the stack and then puts the result on the stack. Uh, multiply, uh, we'll multiply the top two stack items with the result in the stack. Subtract, we'll subtract the top two stack items and you know subtract uh, one from the other and put the, 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 the difference in the stack and so on. Um, now notice that all this arithmetic is performed modulo of two to 256 and the zeroth power of zero, zero to zero is assumed to be one. Um, we also offer division and sign integer division, uh, the modulo remainder operation, the sign modulo operation, addition modulo, multiplication modulo, exponents, um, you know, and um, computing a uh, Keswick 256 hash and extending the length of a two's complement sign integer. So all these things are arithmetic operation codes offered by bytecode. And generally there's a way to do this through Solidity and the other programming languages at a higher level and leverage what's available from the bytecode instructions. So in addition to arithmetic operations provided by bytecode, we also have stack operations. Um, and so these stack operations give you instructions that enable you to access the stack, the memory and the storage. So we have pop, you know, removing the top item from the stack. We can load a word from memory. We can save a word to memory. We can save a byte to memory, load a word, save a word to storage from storage and to storage. Uh, you can get the size of the active memory and byte. So you can push something on X byte, uh, a byte item of some number of bytes onto the stack up to a full word, you can duplicate uh, an item on the stack and you can swap items on the stack. In addition to stack operations, we have process flow operations for control flow. Um, these are the very basic ones. Um, so an instruction to halt execution, you know, just stopping it, uh, an instruction to jump to another value, uh, a, a jump, another jump to conditionally alter the program counter. Uh, get the value of the program counter and then mark a destination for jumps. Uh, from a systems operation perspective, we've got opt codes for the system executing the program. Um, so for example, we can append a log record with a certain number of topics. We can create a new account with an associated code. We can call into another account. We can call into a particular account with another account's code. We can halt the execution. Uh, and return output data. We can delegate a call with an uh, alternative accounts code. 
Uh, we can do a message call into an account on a static message. We can halt execution, reverting state changes, but returning data and remaining gas. We can, uh, we have an invalid instruction and then we have a self-destruct instruction, instruction, which halts execution and registers an account to be deleted. From a logic operations perspective, we've got operation codes for comparison and bitwise logic. So we've got a less than comparison, a greater than comparison, assigned less than comparison, assigned greater than. We've got a quality comparison. We've got a um, simple not operator, which is just is zero. We've got an and and an or operator. We've got an XOR or a not operator. XOR is exclusive or. Um, and then we've got to retrieve a single byte from a 256-bit word operator. For environmental operations, we've got operation codes that deal with the execution environment information. So we can get the amount of available gas after uh, including how much gas was spent to call gas to retrieve the amount of gas because it actually costs gas to figure out what the amount of available gas is which is pretty funny um we've got an address operator to get the address of the currently executing account we've got a balance to get the account balance of any given account we've got an origin operator to get you the address of the wallet that initiated the evm execution we got a caller that gets the address of the caller who called this execution. Um, now, this could give you like an intermediate caller if, you know, if there was an original caller and then they called somebody and then somebody else called this. Uh, call value will tell you how much Ether was deposited by the caller. Call data load will get you the data that was sent in. Call data size will tell you how the size of the data that was sent in. Copying the data to memory, we can get the size of the code running in the current environment. We can copy the code run in the current environment to memory. We can get the gas price specified by the originating transaction. We can get the size of any account's particular code. We can copy any account's code to memory. We can get size of the output data from the previous call. And we can copy data output from the previous call to memory. So those are all the environmental operations. From a block operations perspective, we've got operation codes for accessing information on the current block. So we can get the hash of a recent block. We can get the block's uh, beneficiary address for the block reward, you know, the miner who's getting paid for that block. We can get the block's timestamp. We can get the block's number. We can get the block's difficulty. And we can get the block's gas limit. So this was a short look at the operation codes and bytecode instruction set that's available for the Ethereum virtual machine. We're going to dive in deeper into the Ethereum virtual machine in our next uh, lecture, which is going to be on the Ethereum state that uh, and how that is handled by the EVM.